I usually don't have any problems falling asleep. But I have a tendency to wake up often between 2 to 5 a.m., sometimes as much as three times during that three-hour period. Now, on most nights, I can get back to sleep, but the more often that I wake up, the higher the probability that I can't fall back asleep. So with that in mind, in January, I started middle-of-the-night melatonin supplementation and did that result in better sleep. And then also, as an interesting aside, it may have also improved my heart rate variability, HRV, and resting heart rate, RHR. So why melatonin? So when there's a healthy circadian rhythm, the pineal gland produces melatonin, which then regulates the sleep-wake cycle. However, when there's a uh, circadian rhythm disorder, uh, nighttime light exposure, as one example uh, uh, for something that can impact melatonin levels, results in irregular melatonin levels, uh, an, an awakening disorder, uh, it, which can induce poor sleep quality, which then can increase the prevalence of sleep disorders and subse subsequent chronic illnesses. Now, it isn't just nighttime light exposure that can impact melatonin levels. Aging also impacts nighttime levels of melatonin. So here are blood levels of melatonin on the y-axis plotted against a 24-hour period, starting from 8 a.m. on the left to 8 a.m. on the, uh, the next day on the right. So first, notice that blood melatonin levels are relatively low when awake for almost all of the age groups, uh, starting from 8 a.m. up until about 10 o'clock at night. However, uh, very young kids, 5 to 10 years old, have higher blood levels of melatonin not only during wakefulness from 8 to 10 at night, but also up until peak, uh, uh, the peak when peak melatonins uh, happen at around 2 a.m. So 5 to 10 year olds have the highest blood levels of melatonin at about 2 in the morning. In contrast, se uh, people over the age of 70, for them, their peak melatonin levels are 5 to 6 times reduced when compared with 5 to 10 year olds. So uh, for someone of my chronological age, I'm somewhere in the middle in terms of uh, where mel blood melatonin levels would be. So with that in mind, uh, that may be contributing, an age-related decline for melatonin production may be contributing to these uh, uh, many awakenings from 2 to 5 a.m. So with that in mind, I started middle-of-the-night melatonin supplementation as a means to potentially improve sleep quality. So did it. So here we're looking at sleep duration, and note that uh, sleep duration is measured with a fitness tracker. And for those who don't know which fitness tracker that I use, I'm not sponsored by them, so leave a comment and I'll gladly indicate which tracker that I use. So for sleep duration, this is data from September 2nd of 2021. That's uh, coincidentally the day of blood test number five in 2021. Uh, how far back I could go is debatable, but I wanted to have a relatively recent period to compare melatonin supplementation with without supplementation. So starting from September 2nd of uh, 2021 and going through uh, data earlier this week, February 13th of 2022. So we can see I have 162 days of data as indicated by the N. So the data for melatonin is in red, uh, no melatonin, sorry, is in red. And then data uh, with melatonin supplementation, so days with melatonin supplementation is in black. So I have 26 data, 26 days of data with melatonin and 136 days of data without it. So first, we can see that on days without melatonin supplementation, my average sleep duration was 7.2 hours. And then with melatonin supplementation, on days with melatonin, my average was 7.7 .7 hours. So we can compare these two, two groups of data using a two-sample t-test. And when I do that, we can see that these two groups of data are significantly different, which indicates that I got significantly increased sleep duration, 30 minutes per day, on days with melatonin supplementation. So getting more sleep is good news, but I also noticed interesting alterations for heart rate variability and resting heart rate. And heart rate variability and resting heart rate seem to be improved on days with melatonin supplementation when compared with the 136 days without it. So first, starting with data for heart rate variability, and again, over that 162-day period from September of 2021 through earlier this week in February. And again, data for no melatonin supplementation in red uh, versus uh, melatonin supplementation in black. So starting with the data without melatonin, my average heart rate variability was exactly 52 milliseconds, but with melatonin, it was 54.2 uh, milliseconds. And we can compare these two groups of data, again, with a two-sample t-test, and we can see that these two groups of data are significantly different. So there's a small but significantly higher heart rate variability on days with melatonin supplementation. So what about resting heart rate? So that's what's shown here, again, over that same 162-day period, data for uh, resting heart rate without melatonin in red, uh, and data for uh, resting heart rate with melatonin in black. So without melatonin supplementation in the middle of the night, my average, uh, my resting heart rate was 
uh, 46.7 uh, beats per minute for as an average over that 136 day period. And then for the resting heart rate uh, on days with melatonin, my average resting heart rate was 45.6 beats per minute. And when using a two sample t-test, these two groups of data are significantly different. So there's a small but significantly lower resting heart rate on days with melatonin supplementation. Now note that there seem to be two outliers, those two red data points that are different from all of the rest of the data points. And this is an elevated resting heart rate on the day of and the day after vaccine dose number three. So that raises the question, are these between group differences affected by these, by these two data points? So to assess that, I removed those two data points and then compared between group differences for no melatonin with melatonin. And after doing that, the between group differences uh, remain after removal of these two data points. So in other words, resting heart rate is still significantly lower and heart rate variability is still significantly higher on days with melatonin when compared with not, uh, no melatonin. So how does a higher uh, heart rate variability and a lower resting heart rate fit within the context of youth versus age? So we can put these data into context. So a higher heart rate variability and a lower resting heart rate are found in youth. So first, starting with heart rate variability, it declines during aging, and that's what's shown here. So on the y-axis is the root mean squared of successive differences, RMSSD. That's the uh, version of heart rate variability that my fitness tracker provides. And then th that data is over the, the 20 to 60 year old uh, age range. So uh, starting with the data for men in blue, and but also note that the data for women in red is similar. Heart rate variability declines from values approaching 80 in 20 year olds to somewhere around 40 in 60 year olds. And note that I looked at the data here for uh, six in the morning for the solid lines, uh, because that's when my fitness tracker provides the data. So it provides it during the last sleep cycle. Uh, so it's pretty close to six in the morning when compared with the dashed lines, which is uh, six o'clock at night. But nonetheless, the trend is the same where heart rate variability is declining during aging. All right, what about resting heart rate? So that increases then decreases during aging as shown here for both men in blue and women in green. So we can see that for, uh, in the data for men because that directly applies to me uh, as it's the focus of the video. We can see that resting heart rate increases until about the early 50s and then it declines from uh, about mid 50s up, into 80, up until 85 years old. So note that youth is characterized by a relatively low resting heart rate but a high heart rate variability and in contrast uh, advanced age is characterized by a relatively low resting heart rate and a low heart rate variability. So in my case, when, when, when considering the melatonin data, I saw a heart rate variability increase and a resting heart rate decrease on days with melatonin supplementation, which suggests that these data are going in the right direction in terms of youth and not age. Now, before saying that melatonin caused these improvements, let's have a look at data for other factors that may be impacting heart rate variability and resting heart rate. So first, physical activity. Are levels of physical activity different on days with melatonin when compared with no melatonin? And the hypothesis would be that I may have been more physically active during melatonin, the melatonin supplementation period that may result in better cardiovascular fitness and then potentially an increased heart rate variability and reduced resting heart rate. So here we're looking at the average daily heart rate as an index of physical activity. And again, the fitness tracker provides this data. So that's the heart rate over the whole day, the average heart rate over the whole day. And again, this is over the 162 day period from early September of 2021 through earlier this week uh, in February of 2022. No data for no melatonin in red. And again, for melatonin supplementation in black. So first, looking at the average daily heart rate for no, no melatonin, my average daily heart rate was 57.5 beats per minute as an average. And then for the days with melatonin supplementation, the average daily heart rate was 57.3 beats per minute. And when using a two sample t-test, those two groups of data are not significantly different. So from this, we can conclude that average daily physical activity was not different when comparing days with and without melatonin supplementation. So what about calorie intake? Is calorie intake different on days with melatonin when compared with no melatonin? And the hypothesis there would be uh, a lower calorie intake during the melatonin supplementation period may, or may have resulted in increasing uh, heart rate variability and reducing resting heart rate. So here is calorie intake. And as everyone on, on, I'm sure on the channel knows that I track my food intake every day, I weigh all my food, I log it using an online app and then put all that data into an Excel file. So we're looking at daily calorie intake on the y-axis and again plotted against time that 162 day period, the first 136 days in red, no melatonin versus with melatonin uh, in black. 
So my calorie intake during the no melatonin period was 2372 calories per day on average. And then with melatonin, it was 2336. And when, you, when using a two sample t-test, these two groups of data are significantly different. And from that, we can conclude that calorie intake was significantly lower on days with melatonin supplementation when compared with days without melatonin. So to answer the question, is melatonin causing alterations for heart rate variability and resting heart rate? We can more accurately assess that question by uh, including sleep, physical activity, and calorie intake in multivariate models, as shown here. So here we're looking at the combination of those four variables, total sleep, average daily heart rate, daily calorie intake, and melatonin, so their combination in association with heart rate variability. And we can see that the, the combination of those four variables are significantly associated with heart rate variability, as indicated by the significance F, which is less than 0.05. So from that, we can conclude that the combination of these four variables is significantly associated with heart rate variability. Now, more specifically, after accounting for total sleep, physical activity, and calorie intake in this model, we can see that a relatively higher melatonin intake is significantly associated with a higher heart rate variability. So you can see the coefficient for the melatonin column uh, for the melatonin row is positive, which indicates a relatively higher melatonin intake is correlated with uh, a relatively higher heart rate variability. And we can see that the p-value, that that's a statistically significant association after accounting for those other factors. All right, what about resting heart rate? So again, when looking at those four variables, total sleep, average daily heart rate, daily calorie intake, and melatonin, their collective association with resting heart rate, we can see that the significance F is again less than 0.05. So from that, we can conclude that the combination of these four variables is significantly associated with resting heart rate. And again, more specifically, after accounting for total sleep, physical activity, and calorie intake, we can see that a relatively higher melatonin intake is significantly associated with a lower resting heart rate. As you can see, the coefficient there for melatonin is negative, which indicates a relatively higher melatonin intake is significantly uh, associated with a lower resting heart rate. And again, when I said significantly, we can see that the p-value is less than 0.05. So from these data, we can conclude that melatonin is significantly associated with heart rate variability and resting heart rate in models adjusted for other factors that may be impacting these cardiovascular fitness metrics, including sleep, physical activity, and calorie intake. And then more specifically, melatonin may be helping me get more sleep, but also may be improving heart rate variability and resting heart rate. So when considering these positive data, for now, melatonin stays in the approach. So this, this will be the third uh, supplement that, it, that is in my current approach including uh, vitamin D in the winter, and then uh, uh, methyl B12 uh, every third day. All right, that's all for now. If, if you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.